All animals, and especially us humans, who are very advanced animals, need to attach ourselves to the environment. Our evolution occurred in the natural environment. Our neural system is a response to the natural environment. It evolved for us to input information from the natural environment. We crave that information. Is there a special quality to this information? Yes, there is. Uh, on the one hand, we have fractal information because all plants are fractals. What is a fractal? It is a complex structure that has many different scales so that when you magnify by a certain number, say three or four or five, you magnify a piece of it and then you see a more complex structure. On uh, Many times it is self-similar, namely when you magnify by a factor of three or four, it looks almost the same as it did before. And then you magnify again by a factor of three. It looks exactly the same. You multiply again by a factor of three. You keep magnifying and you see the same structure. So many trees, not all trees, but many trees uh, are like this. The, the human lung, if you open the human lung and you look at it, has a fractal structure. Uh, so uh, we, uh, we are tuned to observe and get information from fractal structure. And if we see something that's not fractals, we immediately and unconsciously notice it because it could be a threat because it doesn't belong in nature. Okay, so it is threatening. What does threatening mean? It means that unconsciously, without our being aware of it, we have anxiety. The anxiety is a trigger to keep us from being bitten or eaten or, or, uh, or killed in some way in our, uh, in our ancestral environment. The stress that's triggered is a positive thing because it kept our ancestors from dying out. However, now it is a burden because in our uh, modern built environment, almost everything is causing us stress. The built environment itself, the geometry of the built environment has become non-fractal. In the beginning of the 20th century, some people declared that the future of architecture has to be uh, uh, non-fractal and they abolished all fractal qualities. So that since then, we live in a non-fractal environment. How does that affect us, uh, our health? It affects our health very badly because it causes stress and continual stress on the human body gives rise to all sorts of terrible diseases and not only a depression, anxiety, but physical diseases. So um, my friends and I are writing papers uh, to document the, the loss of fractality in the built environment. And at the same time, we are going through the literature as best as we can, we're not doctors. Uh, but we have some neuroscientists working with us, and we are looking at medical data experiments that show how, how, uh, how terrible and, and negative the effects are of a non-fractal environment on human health in the long term. So this, this information is, is very recent, say the last 10 years or so. It was not known at the beginning of the 20th century when everyone uh, stupidly but optimistically uh, adopted the new design styles which are anti-fractal and we are living with the consequences now and nobody wants to admit it. So going further from the fractals we have also uh, um, deep symmetry. Now you can have a fractal that's not symmetrical. Symmetry is something else that we grew up with because the, the way the brain works to, to input information uh, um, codifies the information if there are symmetries. Symmetries means that we don't have to, to, um, to give every piece of information, every pixel on a screen, we don't have to code it separately because symmetry means that there is redundancy. Okay, if you have a, a mirror symmetry, one half is exactly the same as the other half. So you only need to, to specify one half. If there is rotational symmetry, you take the piece that's rotating, that's going around, one piece, well, you specify that and then that goes around. You don't have to, to, uh, to specify everything. So this is a compression of information, which means, what does it mean for us? Again, it's our survival. Compression of information that we have to uh, interpret means that we do it much faster. Much faster is a survival advantage because when we are faced with a danger and we can react 
in a certain time if we can if it takes us 10 times uh, the the amount of time to react to that information then we may get eaten so so this is uh, this was an advantage okay so uh, mathematically and this is a mathematical uh, analysis we have the the essential part of, of fractal structure in our environment on the one hand and on the other hand we have subsymmetries or levels of scale in christopher alexander's uh, terminology uh, the levels of scale and and subsymmetries local symmetries uh, which means that we don't have just an overall symmetry, a building that's perfectly symmetrical. No, that's, that's the least important. We have, say, uh, 1,000 or 1 million smaller symmetries on all different scales. So this is where the, the fractal part of a structure blends with the symmetry, the deep symmetry part. So you have symmetries on every different scale that link that scale together say, what's the, what's the scale? Say one meter. Things are happening on one meter that have symmetry in them. And then you have smaller scales. You have, say, 30 centimeters, 10 centimeters, 3 centimeters. On each one of those scales are separate symmetries that interlock and are multiple symmetries. They create a coherence and they create complexity. But the complexity is a, is a healing complexity because we perceive it as a regular it is not a random complexity, like you throw something up in the air, it's, uh, it's a random pattern. No, uh, uh, the human mind is tuned to uh, interpret uh, coherent complexity because that's what we, uh, that's what we evolved uh, to, to do uh, in, in nature. So we look at nature and we see the coherent complexity uh, and uh, we have a combination, a very beautiful mathematical combination of fractal structure, which has many different scales, plus deep symmetry, where symmetries are, multiple symmetries are present on each one of those scales, and everything is cooperating. Now, uh, when you build something, how do you call the smaller scales? The smaller scales are ornament. Ornament is necessary to complete the fractal. The fractal, in order for the fractal to be healing, for us to be able to attach to the fractal, we have to attach to the smaller scale, which are the human scale. Scales on the size of the hand or of the fingers, okay? So I'm talking about uh, six inches, one inch, half an inch, quarter inch. Those are the, the, uh, the dimensions of ornament. In order to have a complete fractal, whether it is a perfect mathematical fractal or a statistical fractal, you need those scales. So that's traditionally where ornament comes in. I'm fully aware that in the beginning of the 20th century, a certain group of people banned ornament for very poor reasons, but it stuck. And today we have a total devastation of an ornamentless environment. However, our physiology begs for ornament so that we can connect to the built environment. As a result of this lack of starvation of ornament, we are going around and we cannot attach to the built environment. Is that uh, on purpose? Well, that's it's a separate question. Uh, how many people do you see going around and are glued to the smartphone? Because at least there's something happening on the smartphone. It is the organized complexity. Uh, there are colors, there are symmetries. Uh, we and they ignore the, uh, uh, the the built environment. Is that healthy for us? Well, no, not really. It's uh, it's, it's not a good uh, it's not a good development. But uh, th that is because uh, the world, or at least the industrialized world, has adopted uh, the, the poverty of a, of an ornamentless environment uh, for no good reason. It's just uh, some it's a dogma that that, uh, that was adopted and fiercely defended in architecture schools. Uh, again, no good reason has ever been given uh, for this, and there are, 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 uh, there's a, a vast number of good reasons against it. Uh, these are the medical reasons uh, that, uh, that, uh, that show that an attachment, a visceral and emotional attachment to the built environment is healthy for us because it reduces stress. It boosts our immune system. For that to occur, we need the uh, physical structure to occur in our immediate built environment, 
that we can touch, that we can see, that's on these scales again, the human scales, the hand, the fingers, uh, the, the arm. These are the human scales. This, these are the scales of ornament. Now look with what a deliberate a viciousness ornament has been eliminated from the built environment even today when we can create anything we want with uh, with a computer manufacturing nobody creates ornament and um, and uh, it's left only to the non-industrialized nations uh, to continue some some of their um, uh, traditions uh, ornamental traditions uh, and uh, and the people who who create their own ornament uh, uh, are constantly criticized as, as primitive by uh, by the media of the industrialized nations, which is a, it's a horrible, horrible thing, but it's occurring as, as we speak. Uh, and of course, the, the worst offenders are, are the architectural media who, who condemn anyone uh, who builds a house um, or a building and ornaments it is, is immediately uh, uh, condemned by the architectural media. Uh, well, look, this cannot go on. This, this is bad. This is a crime against humanity. It is bad for human people. It is bad for human health. Face recognition plays a very important role in our lives. Uh, our brain has a percentage of its neurons devoted to the recognition of faces. This means that we look for these spatial symmetries, namely vertical axis, bilateral symmetry about the vertical axis, not a diagonal axis, but a vertical axis, which is uh, how animal and, um, and human faces are, and uh, uh, identifiable objects on either side of, of the face, like the eyes, the ears, uh, the nose. Uh, these are um, uh, part of our evolution since a human evolution um, uh, for, for the last several millennia. Uh, dependent upon uh, being able to interpret expressions of animals and humans, and especially humans. The cultural evolution uh, is, is absolutely um, um, dependent upon us being able to, to interpret tiny details of, of uh, the expression of, of human beings. And therefore, we, uh, our brain has, has, has uh, evolved uh, since uh, our, our primitive ancestors in order to be able to uh, to, to interact with humans. Uh, that is why we uh, look for abstract symmetries in a building and in the building environment. We look for bilateral symmetries in a window. If, if a window has the symmetries of a human face or an animal face, we feel more comfortable with it. If it is slanted, if it is missing that, that uh, vertical symmetry, the bilateral symmetry, then uh, we feel it is alien somehow. Uh, some very famous buildings have have a, a face-like qualities. The the the, um, uh, the 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 opening is say the entrance looks like a mouth, and then we have uh, something windows or doors uh, situated uh, bilaterally symmetric uh, positions uh, around that. So uh, oh, it's an abstract type of face, uh, and this makes sense because uh, it immediately links to us. We attach visually to to this kind of um, uh, of building. Now, my colleague Anne Sussman has written extensively on how uh, uh, the human brain is tuned to recognize uh, facial type symmetries on buildings, and we're attracted where, uh, to a building that, that has these, even if they're very abstract. And on the other hand, we, we are either repelled or totally uninterested in, in a building that lacks these symmetries. For example, a blank wall. Now we have the VAS, the visual attention software that we can do an instant analysis. And we see that uh, uh, in a minimalist uh, facade, a minimalist facade is invisible to the human brain. We don't look at it. It might as well not be there. Even if it has won a Prisker Prize, it doesn't exist. It's a total waste of money uh, because uh, the, the brain refuses to look at it. it uh, uh, the brain attaches through some sort of ornament, some sort of deep symmetry, we look at a, a, a more traditional type of facade, and if it's ornamented, we attach to the ornament. If the facade has the bilateral symmetries corresponding to a human face, then, then we attach to that uh, emotionally, and, and that building exists for us in our universe, in our worldview, if we have to experience it, if we, if we walk by it, and if we, uh, if we have to uh, enter it and use it, 
uh, somehow it exists for us, whereas the, the minimalism that doesn't exist. Okay, so why spend a lot of money to, to build minimalist buildings? Well, <laughs> why indeed? Uh, people do it, and uh, uh, but there are, so people do it doesn't mean that it's good. Uh, it's 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 bad for the uh, for the uh, neurological uh, connection because it cuts neurological connection with the environment. At the other extreme is the randomness. Uh, a randomness uh, does not uh, uh, does not enable neurological connection because we get anxious when we are. Um, uh, when we try to interpret a random pattern, I'm ashamed to say that the architectural profession has for several decades now um, intentionally created random patterns. And those create anxiety because the brain is constantly trying to, to uh, order those using symmetries, fractal scaling and, and uh, bilateral symmetries, transitional symmetries. And it keeps working. The brain keeps working constantly because uh, we are constantly inputting information from the environment that affects our survival. Okay, this is the 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 the, the primordial human body that has not changed for a million years. We still have that uh, uh, constant information processing. And if we cannot make sense of the information because it is intentionally random, then uh, we we wind up with stress. Now, just uh, just one or two days ago, I saw a, 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 a swimming pool in Germany where uh, some so-called artists had been asked to make a whole wall, you know, beautiful, huge wall, a tile pattern. Well, this, this so-called artist made a random tile pattern. I guess uh, he uh, worked overtime to try to make this as anxiety-inducing uh, as possible. And so people who have to use the swimming pool oh, suffer anxiety. Uh, unless they, they don't look, uh, they look away from it, you know, but it's, it's one giant uh, wall. So uh, why do this? Okay, this is supposed to be fashionable. It creates anxiety. Uh, and, uh, and, and this person was paid and, and the people actually uh, approved it. Uh, the, the whole system is crazy. Uh, an artist who creates anxiety intentionally because uh, uh, he, in this case, it's a he, uh, thinks that it's cute and it's fashionable to do so. And then people who pay to have this built, uh, instead of be, uh, being sued or put in jail for wasting, uh, for wasting money that was supposed to be uh, used for the renovation of the pool. Well, this is what our society is, uh, uh, has come to uh, because of total ignorance of how the built environment, how the design of the built environment and the math mathematics of the built environment affects human health. That's it. And, no, uh, and although anything, everything I'm telling you is not new, everything I'm telling you has, has been around. And if you're interested, you can read about it on the Internet. Uh, those who make decisions just don't care to learn about uh, the, these latest discoveries about human health. And so we continue to have an a inhuman environment, alienating environment that causes anxiety and stress. OK, what do we do? Well, uh, you don't have to do anything more than, than read Christopher Alexander's uh, The Nature of Order, where he gives a detailed description of how to create uh, a harmonious and coherent uh, geometries that, that, we, uh, that we can uh, attach to and attune to. Uh, so he, has, uh, he presents the 15 uh, fundamental properties. I've given a whole talk uh, on 15 geometrical properties. We, they're available. Okay, you buy the book or you read several essays, including one by me, uh, free on the internet. You can use those today to design uh, environments that have a coherence that you can attach to, and that if you build something that has these properties, then, then it's a healing environment. It's good for human health. We should not be building um, uh, structures that intentionally violate this. It's 